Hello everyone. So today we are starting a very big playlist and a very very profound knowledge. Okay, and this is knowledge. I don't know who is teaching. I don't know who has learned this knowledge. I don't know who has gone this much deeper into uh, science of uh, spiritual awakening and. This is the knowledge which will take you to the process of transmigration. Okay, so what is transmigration? Transmigration is the journey of soul into bodies. Okay, different bodies from one body to another body, another body to next body. And this is kind of very complex process, and that is why it is not possible that we can finish a video or we can finish some small videos into this. And I and I'm going to go deeper and deeper into this, teach you each and every small detail about the Nyaya Sutras. Yes, you heard it right. We are going to understand Nyaya Sutras. What is Nyaya Sutras? Nyaya is justice. See, uh, there is a quite lot of misconceptions. There are also a very, uh, what you say, different type of beliefs, different type of. Uh, th there are lots of. See, knowledge. The uh, one problem about knowledge is when it, when the knowledge starts spreading, it is very difficult to identify what you have to grab onto. It is also very difficult to identify what is right and what is wrong. And more difficult is to identify where exactly you have to go. Okay, so let's leave my face apart and let's focus on the board so I can somewhere type things and show you over here. Okay, I don't know whether I am coming on the board or not. Okay, so we are going to learn about Nyaya Sutras, and first and foremost, why Nyaya Sutras? See, many people, ninety percent of spiritual people, talk about. Karma. Okay, let's let's remove this ninety and make it eighty. Okay, whether I am doing some error. So eighty percent of people talk about karma. What is karma? Karma is action, right? Karma is action. What does karma give? Okay, see, uh, there are three to four types of different karmas. One which is accumulated, okay, that is Sanchit karma. One which is going on, that is Pranab karma. Then there is also a third type of karma, which says that which karma you are currently beholding in your life, what is going on right now in your life, and what are you selecting, and that is Kriyaman, okay. So again, I write K T. Okay, let's forget about karma. So there are three karmas from which you are born, from which your destiny has begun, from what we are going on right now, and what will be the roots of your next karma or uh, current tomorrow. Okay. So from from this Sanjit karma, it's like uh, you have few karmas that your soul has to learn. From that, in this life, you have selected ten karmas to live by. This is what is your current account. So, eighty percent of people talk about karma. What happens from karma? Karma is the action. From action, there are two things. Many people don't know this. Two things that is reaction and. reactive action what is the difference between reaction and reactive action reaction is which 
this is the action and this is the action you have done from your action if you are getting something in return okay with processing okay this this happens with processing when processing takes place and you get any fruit of the reaction is your reaction when there is no processing and you get a random result now many scholars and vedic scholars would say that everything is calculated and there is no uh, uh, randomness in the world but there is a place for randomness in the calculations okay what i mean to say is randomness is also present but calculative randomness is present which means whenever something is random is happening in your life it is calculated that these things will give a random result and these things will not give a random result okay so i have a dice in my hand okay and i am throwing a dice there is a fixed result i would get results from 1 to 6 okay but now i have a lot of sticks in my hands broken sticks and i'm throwing the broken sticks in the river my friend is is standing 10 km below the river if i would tell him that collect all the sticks i have thrown by would it be possible no so that is the random karma random reactive action okay uh, let's give one more example see another thing about processing is somebody slapped you okay and you were sleeping you were sleeping and somebody slapped you so what happened you got the slap as soon as you got the slap you woke up and in the sleep itself when you woke up you gave the person two bad words okay now the next scenario is you are awake you are conscious in your consciousness a person is coming to you is telling you be in your limits you don't be in your limits you show your ego he slaps you and then you give him the same two bad words in the second instance there is a time for processing you processed in your you your mind actually processed it was your own reaction that you decided to give that is why it becomes a reaction another thing was a reactive action because you were sleeping your mind couldn't process so even if you did a bad karma it was a reactive action and not a reaction getting the difference you didn't calculated this action it happened by your subconscious mind so anything that happens with subconscious mind is reactive action and all reactive actions are solved in this life in the reaction there are two possibility might be solved might not be solved okay so this is the basic difference between reaction and reactive action you need to know this very well before we start our journey you can see this topic is very big nyay sutras are very big and i don't know how many days it might go away in explaining you the nyay sutras of gautam rishi which is also the base pillar of the chitragupta when you die after you die your soul is being judged by the lord chitragupta and chitragupta is saying what you did what you shouldn't do what you have to and everything comes to you in your next life okay so why i am talking about this karma so many scholars 80% of spiritual scholars talk about karma 
and a one who is perfect in karma is called karma yogi very good i don't criticize karma yogi people okay it is a rightful path and you should always know now what comes and why, why do we call this karma as a cycle okay why do we call this karma as a cycle because you are doing you are karma yogi you are doing rightful karmas and this right karmas will give you a good life in your next world okay transmigration so even in the karmic cycle you are going round and round and round and round and round okay so what comes before karma is dharma what is dharma decision okay what does every religion teach you every religion teaches you dharma that is why it is called dharma dharma is decision okay now think on this anyone who tells you this is how you should act this is how you should do karma what are they telling you they are telling you how to decide how do you act what tells you how to act your decisions tell you how to act okay so actions are based on decisions okay so all your karmas are based on dharmas now see now take it into a mundane naive language a hindu is say a hindu dharma a hindu dharma person burns a body after he is dead a muslim is called a muslim dharma a muslim dharma person burns the body after he is dead okay similarly every dharma teaches you how to decide in your life now let's say muslim dharma teaches you to do this x y and z things so they are telling you how to act every dharma is showing you a path of action and what is called showing a path of action is called decision making so what are all the religions all the religions are simple funda of making decisions this is all this is it we gave different stories in different religions and we picked uh, uh, what you say different people who we considered that they are making right decision okay consider our 33 gods okay see ram ram people who follow ram be like ram what does that mean people who follow ram follow the decisions of ram people who follow krishna follow the decisions of krishna people who follow allah follows the decisions of allah people who follow jesus follows the decision of jesus people who follow lucifer follows the decision of lucifer okay no matter what the dharma is whether it, it is placed in the good category it is placed in a bad category dharma is dharma dharma is religion every dharma teaches you how to act and the process of learning how to act is the process of making decision so what is it every dharma book every book of all religion is teaching you decision making in their own way okay correct me if i am wrong i am not read the quran quran is teaching you do this do that do not don't do this don't do that okay they are uh, teaching it in, uh, in a different language okay so who when someone teaches you what to do this what what not to do is someone telling you how to decide okay so how to decide is dharma all dharma is telling you how to decide okay they are just merely your decision making processes now see christianity is based on the principles of jesus jesus was a singular person so that dharma is the decision making process of that single individual but that single individual was capable to conquer the mass of mass public of the world from his decision making process 
That is why a mass public of the world is following his decision making process which is called Christianity, the Dharma of Jesus Christ. The decision making of Jesus Christ. Okay. Similarly, say Allah. Allah is, uh, Allah's decision making power was also uh, huge. Okay. That is why many people nowadays or since beginning follow the decision making scheme or decision making uh, uh, what you say uh, mindset of Allah. So they follow Quran. That is mean the decision making power of Allah. Consider our Hindu Shastras. Hindu Shastras are built on merely on seven Chattarishis. Okay. So the combined decision making power of seven Chattarishis is what we follow. Okay. What is Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva? Brahma and Vishnu, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are three uh, major perspectives of how uh, uh, different psychologies, three different psychologies of human body, human mind. But the total decision making lies of seven chapter issues. Okay. So even our Hindu Dharma is, what does Dharma teach? Decision. You take any Dharma in the world, Dharma is nothing else. But a mode of decision making, any dharma you take, any dharma. So, 80% of spiritual people talk about actions. From this, even few people talk about dharma, that is decisions. And let's take few more, that is, let's take around 30% talk about dharma. Okay, so from dharma comes karma. Now, if this is wrong, if this process is wrong, all the detailed studies of this process is useless. Okay, all the studies of karma is useless. See, you study the actions of any people, you, you study the actions of their past life, you study the actions of their current life, you study all the astrological charts, you study anything in the world related to karma is useless until and unless karma is not there. Okay, when you don't know what you are deciding, how you are deciding and what you should decide. How you are acting is meaningless. Totally meaningless. Getting my point. So in the process of trans transmigration, okay, what is transmigration? When your soul moves from one body to another body, okay, consider this is one body, now it is moving to another body, now it is moving to another body, now it is moving to another body. Over here it has done it has it, it did five karma good and five karma bad. So here he is suffering this ten karmas plus over here he again did two karmas good okay so over here he is again from this he has uh, completed uh, let's say uh, four karmas eight are still pending so over here uh, sorry six are still pending so six plus two eight eight karmas from past life and whatever new karmas he makes over here so this process will go on and on and on and on and on why because people are stuck in the race of karma they are just studying their actions. What to do, what not to do. What is happening, what is not happening. What we'll do and how to rectify. See, if you are thinking about acting, karma is also an acting, action, activity. Okay. So, if you are wanting that your karma is based on clearing the karmas of past life. Is that your right decision? Is that your right to dharma? Think on it. See, this is where many religions fall apart. Even in our Hindu scriptures, many different things would fall apart when I, when I will stick on this topic, okay? When you are walking on a path, thinking that I want to clear all my karmas. So what is your decision? Your decision, your dharma, your decision is based on clearance of 
karma. What you have decided in your life, I want to clear my karmas. Okay, so your decision is based on clearance of karma. Now think why? Why have you decided to clear your karmas? A different sannyasi, different yogis will give me a different answer. Basically, they all will give one answer that they want to go away from this cycle of transmigration. They don't want this cycle of transmigration. They don't want their soul to transform here again and again and again. Okay. So, is that decision right? Make the question mark. Is that decision right? Are you bloody on this earth just to find a way to get out of this earth? Okay. Are you bloody on this earth to find a way to get out of this earth? Or if the earth has given you a chance to be on this world, be on this earth, you'd rather do some good service. You rather help the earth, you rather help the mother earth, you rather help the society, anything. But isn't this Isn't it selfish that you are bloody living your life just in order to clear your karmas? Okay, is it right? You want to live your life because you want to clear the karma and just get rid of this life. Okay, that is why you are giving the life? Not at all. That is how you treated your life. You are given a life over here as a human being and you treated your, the life like Oh my god, I don't want this life. There is suffering over here. Is this why uh, the, uh, the supreme nature has given you the life? Just to criticize the life word itself and go away from over here? Is the reason that is why you are given a life? No. So first of all, this is a very selfish demand that you want to clear your karmas. Okay. So see, this is where the decision making takes up. Everybody in the internet, everybody in the religion, every sadhu, everyone wearing different color clothes are talking about karma. What the hell? There is no need to talk about karma. Okay, forget about karma. Because until you are making your decisions right, your actions have nothing to do with it. Okay. So, don't be a karma yogi. Don't be a karma yogi first. Okay, I am not, I'm not saying, I am not criticizing anyone for doing anything. Okay, that is not my karma. That is not my decision. But, there is no need of talking about karma when people are not aware of dharma. Chihare loko ne decision making a nathi avartu, to action kiyam karvi enu bad bad karvati su paido che. Getting my point, people don't know how to take decisions, why are you teaching, te teaching them how to act? What you should rather be teaching them is how to decide. Okay, you should be teaching them how to decide, not how to act, first of all. Okay, so now see, we removed a major part of things over here. So, the Nyaya Sutra is completely based on... First of all, there is one more principle. If you think on your actions, you will spend your life thinking on actions. And that is not the right decision again. Okay. Your whole life you will be thinking about how should I act, what should I act, what should I act, and what is my action, and do hell with your actions. Make a right decision, and don't think about actions, whatever it will be happen, if the decision is right, actions are already always going to be right. So if the dharma is right, karma is going to be right. Okay. So, oh, oh here we will first see the power of decision making. And now when you need to decide, okay, there is one more thing I am going to tell you. There are, two, two, there are three types of different karmas. One that you do from your senses. Okay. All your senses. Second one, what you do to survive. 
Okay, for survival you have to do some karmas, you have to pick the fruit from the tree, that is a karma, that is for survival. Another is from your senses. Okay, what you like to taste, you take. What you like to see, you see. That is karma of your senses. Another is the karma of your survival. Okay, third karma is the, is the karma of your mother and father which is in your genetical code and which, are, which you are suffering over here. Or just say, we, I won't use the word suffering what you are uh, handling in this birth. Okay. Next is the karma that you are building after the age of 16, when you are mature. Okay. After that, whatever karma you have done, it also counts. Next, what karma you are dissolving from your past life. Okay. So, where is the role of decisions? See, that is a karma is a complete cycle and it will go on and on and on and on. Okay, because even you are going to be a father and a mother. So, would you say that I will renounce everything? Okay, even in Bhagavad Gita, it is said that Tyagis and Sanyasis don't get uh, the supreme abode. Okay, read Bhagavad Gita. I see it is written over there. Uh, Krishna himself said that Tyagis and the Sanyasis also don't get the higher supreme abode because they have renounced the world in a way that they have tyag it. Okay, tyag is not a very good word. Renouncing is not a very good act. Okay, you got a family, you had that responsibility to maintain that family. Okay, you didn't do the responsibility of that family. So in next birth, you will have Saturn in 4000 and Saturn is now going to force you that go make a family. Simple. So, renunciation is not a supreme action, okay? So, talking about decisions. Now, what is about decisions, okay? First, we talked about action. Decisions was about about action, okay? Because if you don't decide rightly, how can you act in a rightful manner? Okay? So, before even taking decisions, what we have to do is, apprehension of life okay so even before decisions there is a process of apprehension of life agar ee vastu ne tame ee rite jota ad nathi to decision khota ad padva na che ne agar tame ek zoo ne ek katal khana ni jem josho to tame decision khota ad lesho ane ek tame katal khana ne zoo ni jem josho to e tamara decision khota ad lese so before making a decision what you see, what you have to do is is to apprehend the situation. So, what what is the role of Chitragupta? It is a very hard role. After you die, your soul is going to Chitragupta and Chitragupta is going to tell you that what right and what wrong things you have done. Okay, and what is my scale of measurement of the soul? Okay, and what all things are necessary that you had to do in this world, in this nature, on this planet Earth. So he has some rules and those are called the supreme 16 fallacies over here. Those are the Nyaya Sutras of Gautam Rishi. Gautam Rishi was taught by Lord Shiva himself and there is a book called the Nyaya Sutras of Gautam Rishi and in that you will find all the knowledge I am going to say and I am going to speak out and I am going to explain over here. No matter there is hymns and verses over there, but I have extracted each and every page, each and every word, and I am going to explain you over here. It might take like a month if I make a video daily. But this is the supreme knowledge of transmigration. Supreme knowledge, there is no greater knowledge in the spiritual world. Because what, what is astrology? Astrology is again related to karma. Astrology is knowing your karma. Understanding what is going to happen in your life. The study of Kala Chakra. What is Kala time? Chakra is cycle. The cycle of time. This is about time. Samaye thiye upar niv charcha kari si Okay, about time. This is about time. Even when the time didn't persist. After the time of your soul. 
after you have lived over here what is going to happen before you come over here the next time what is going to happen what are the decisions are uh, over here people uh, your soul is going to make so this knowledge is about the knowledge of time because this is the knowledge of supreme justice and there is nothing in this entire nature that doesn't follow the rule of equilibrium or justice okay so this is this is uh, the uh, the rules of justice of your soul okay so there are 16 supreme felicities for this we see 16 gunas or 16 guna balance i will also zoom it if you people cannot see but i think that it is quite visible okay so these are the 16 gunas and in all my videos in this playlist i'll be explaining these things one by one by one okay so first is praman okay before you make any decision you need to see what is the praman so this praman is the means of righteous knowledge okay whether you are getting the information from the right source whether the information you are taking is coming from a uh, what you say uh, your mind your senses your soul your desire okay where is that decision making knowledge coming from see over here don't take the meaning of knowledge like knowledge okay praman means to take a praman of anything okay suppose i am suppose i want to pursue a career in career as a mechanical and mechanical engineer so is is it a desire okay is that a passion or is that a need of my soul or am i doing it just to fulfill my family needs okay where from where is the means of righteous knowledge coming from okay that is the praman praman of any event you want to go and travel why do you want to go and travel so praman is the means of righteous knowledge that is the first thing because until you know the praman it is difficult to understand why are you doing anything what you are doing okay everything over here will have sub videos okay everything over here this video can also be of uh, there will be a separate video of prama then prama then samasyas prayojan okay so i am just giving you overview in the first video okay so let's talk about prama first okay so the prama is from where is the means of righteous knowledge coming the basic means of righteous knowledge is coming from your perception okay and you have to see that whether that perception is coming from your senses or your senses are established from your perceptions okay whether your senses are established from the perception of your mind or the perception of your mind is established through your senses which one is right which one is going to give a transmigration that is another birth the second birth from your perception that is from what you have seen you see uh, you see uh, 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 ice cream okay you saw ice cream okay and then there is uh, you get a watery mouth okay so that means your senses are established from the perception you saw something and your mouth got watery the second instance you thought that i want to take an ice cream i want an ice cream okay and then you go and take ice cream that is your perception is established through your senses which which one of them came first was the perception or was was the sense okay did you see things and then your senses got activated 
or whether your senses got activated and then you saw you saw things inside your mind and then you saw the perception of going and taking an ice cream and then you go and take the ice cream okay so that is prama prama is from where you have known and where from where you have started everything okay whether everything started from the perception or whether everything started from the senses if everything started from a perception then it is called a posterior what is a posterior praman and if everything started from senses it is called an anterior praman and if all ob if all objectors are valid the perception is turned into reality okay now if all the objects of your senses and your perception are valid then it is possible that it it is converted into reality you have the money of buying ice cream in your pocket and the shop which is selling the ice cream is right in front of your house all the objects are valid so it turns into reality see whether this uh, this thing came into your mind at at midnight at 3 3 am and the shop is not present so that perception is not going to get into reality okay so this was praman means of right is knowledge see uh, in detail i if i talk about detail about this 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 i am going to take different sessions on this different videos on this i am just showing basics right now i am not going into detail so the first part is praman what you have to see first about decision making before you decide anything is praman that is the means of right yes knowledge okay from where it is right to consider everything okay after that you take inferences on the means of righteous knowledge okay which means you conclude after you have found out from where the means are coming then you conclude on it after you have concluded you see whether there is mutual reference or th there is no mutual reference in what you have known and then you again compare things that is your comparison uh, coming to a conclusion of things or it, 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 is your comparison coming to the causes okay so the praman that is from where the knowledge is come from where you have initiated a decision in your mind whether it is concluding the events of action or whether it is being a cause of a new actions if whatever you have decided is being the cause of new actions then you are building a new karma and if whatever you have decided is concluding the previous actions then you are dissolving a karma okay so that was praman then next next thing would be what we will study in detail is pramaya pramaya sorry pramaya is the object of righteous knowledge okay from what object you are supposed to take the rightful knowledge and if you if you talk about pramaya how many type of pramaya is are there see one is your soul another is your sense okay third is your remembrance that is your memory fourth is your body okay from where object of righteous knowledge is from where you are taking your righteous knowledge okay from where you are considering the knowledge has came from is the object of selecting your uh, uh, selecting the decision of uh, everything what you are doing uh, or what you what event is going to come whether it is coming from your soul whether it is coming from your senses whether it is coming from your body okay whether it is coming from your remembrance that is your memory what is the object of righteous knowledge that is what it is from me okay and there are many objects of righteous knowledge like soul then you have to study about soul that how come you how come would you be sure that this is the act of your soul and not the act of your body 
then you have to be sure that this is the act of your body and not the act of your soul. This is also the act of your senses and not of either of soul and either of the body. Okay. Or whether it is the property of your remembrance. Okay. Or whether it is your mind which is creating the object of right ears knowledge. Okay. Whether it is your mind. Okay. You also have to see it if you, if whether it is your mind, whether it is your body, whether it is your soul. Okay. When you understand that from where you are starting the object of your current rightest knowledge, that is going to decide your character. In Sanskrit we say charitra. A good a person with a good charitra uses all these things inside his own self. Uses the soul when the soul is about to use, uses the uh, what you say mind where the mind is supposed to be used, uses the senses where the senses are supposed to be used and uses the uh, memory when the memory, are, memory is supposed to be used. So the second thing is Ramaya. Third thing is Samasya that is doubt. See doubt resolving is also very much important because with everything in your life your mind is going to create doubt. So resolution of doubt is very much important. Okay, suppose Suppose this object of righteous knowledge I found it is body, sense, and soul. It is either body, sense, or soul. Okay. And means of righteous knowledge. What are the means of righteous knowledge? Perception. Desire, need. Okay, whether you are doing it for the for what means are you performing any action? For what means are you deciding anything in your life? That is the praman. Okay, and you know uh, within this it is more likely that it is your need or it is your perception of doing things. Okay, and if you are not sure about what is the object of righteous knowledge, or even if you are sure. It might be possible that your need is connected to your soul and connected to your body. It is also possible that the perception is correct is connected to your body or connected to your soul. So, in order to correct and know what is right among it, okay, whether it is your soul speaking, whether it is your body speaking, or whether they are your senses who are speaking. For that, you need a right tactic to understand or clear doubts. For that we say samasya. Okay. Then we learn the third thing that is solving doubts. Because from over here we came to know the means of righteous knowledge. From where the knowledge has came. Okay. Whether the knowledge has came from the mind. Whether it is coming from senses. Okay. That is the object of righteous knowledge. This was the means of righteous knowledge. Why have you decided to do this? Why has your soul decided this? Why is your mind thinking like this? Why is your sense is talking like this okay so when praman and pramay are known okay when you know everything about praman and pramay you will have such kind of mixed flow chart after you got this mixed flow chart then you have to solve the doubt that whether if it is a perception is it the perception of the body soul sense or the mind whether it is a need then is it is it the need of body or soul? Because uh, any action which is performed for the need of body is right. But any action which is performed for the need of sense is wrong. Okay. Similarly, any action which is taken from the perception of sense is right. And for, from the perception of soul is wrong. Okay. So all these kinds of rules we we'll study from Samasya. Okay. When we study Samasya. After we have studied Praman and Pramaya. Then you will study Samasya. After Samasya, doubts, when the doubts are resolved, then comes Pariyojan. Pariyojan is purpose. Okay, most people directly think over here that their purpose in life is to do this. The purpose to do this is this. The purpose of doing this is this. Hey, dude, first clear your mind. 
see from where the knowledge of, is coming, from where it is coming from your eyes. From, because if it, if it is the means of your senses, okay, you, you are like in your 8th and 10th standard and you like maths, you are getting very good marks in maths, okay, and everyone is appreciating, appreciating you for your math, mathematics skills, okay, you are getting 90, 100 marks in your mathematics. Everyone around you is uh, like cheering you up, oh, yay, yay, okay, so what happens is, your hormones will go up, okay, then your senses will make you like, okay, dude, this is a good thing and I am getting appraisal for maths, okay, so let's select a career of mathematics, okay, then you go and select a career of mathematics, after 20 years you know that it is a very dumb career, you always wanted to be a pianist and you ruin your life. Okay, so first you see means of righteous knowledge, then you see the object of your righteous knowledge, after that you solve the doubts, whether it is coming from mind, whether it is coming from senses, whether it is your soul talking, okay. After you clear clear the doubts, then comes the purpose, okay, then because over here you are sure, okay, that my senses are saying it is, okay, plus the object is the perception of senses, okay. My perception of senses is saying it, okay, after you solve doubt, and then you can see the purpose, what is the purpose, whether, uh, or you can see that your soul is saying this, and the reason is the need, and not the perception, okay, so the object becomes the soul, and the means becomes the need, so the mean of your righteous knowledge is the need of doing it, and the object is the soul, soul is, the, it is the need of your soul to do it, over here, it is the perception of your senses that you do it. Okay. So, from these things, you decide the purpose of what you are doing in life. Whatever the small thing you are doing, if you are taking a bike, if you want a bike, if you want a car, like I had some one of, uh, one of my colleague, not colleague, but my friends, friends, okay, over here, and they were, uh, I guess, they, they, they are in Canada, if they are watching this video, they might know. They asked me that, I want to buy a car. Okay. And looking at the astrology chart, I denied them. Okay, it is not a rightful time for you to buy a car because you already have some karmic debt that you are solving. Okay. Now let's see. If they find out that why do they want a car? Do they want do they want the car for the need? Or is it the perception that they should always have a car? They should have a car for transport. Why? Okay, see. Let me join down over here. Even a simple thing. See, if they want to buy a car, why? Do, why? What is the means? Okay, is it the soul? Is it the body? Is it the mind? Or are it senses? Okay. And is it the need? Is it the perception? Or is it the, what do you say, desire? What is it? So, how many possibilities can, can you build over here? Is it the need of the soul? Is it the perception of the soul? Is it the desire of the soul? Is it the need of the body? Is it the perception of the body? Is it the desire of the body? Is it the need of the mind? Is it the perception of the mind? Is it the desire of the mind? Is it the need of the senses? Is it the perception of the senses? Or is it the desire of the senses? Okay, and this list can also go la longer and this list can also go longer. After solving this from doubts, the person would actually know that the need is the need of from the mind and senses together. Okay, and, and is it the need or is it the desire? It would definitely be a desire because there are also public transport over there. So if you are not in a time to buy a car, and you wanted to buy from EMI or anything, then it is your desire first of all, because it is your not it is it is not your need. And if you are uh, wanting to buy a car because your friends have a car, then it is a perception. Okay, it is your perception that everyone should have a car. That is why you are buying a car. Then it becomes your perception. Or in any case, it might become your desire that you are desiring to buy a car. Now, desires of soul are good. Desire of the body is bad. Desire of the mind is bad, desire of the senses is bad, but against it, the need of the soul is bad, the need of the body is right, the need of the mind is bad, sorry, the need of the mind is right and need of the senses is bad. Okay. 
So similarly, this is how you will decide your purpose. And it is very much important to decide a purpose. And this is a very small thing. Consider you are going into a relationship. You are going to marry a person. Why are you ma marrying? What is the means of righteous knowledge for marrying? Okay. What is the object of righteous knowledge? Okay. Why are you marrying? Because is it, is it the need for you to marry? Is it the desire for you to marry? Is it the perception of you to marry? Is your body asking um, a marriage? Is your soul asking a marriage? Is, is your mind asking a marriage? Okay. So it is very important to see all these factors. But let's not talk about this right now. Okay. So after purpose comes Drishtant. Drishtant is familiar instances. Okay. Suppose is suppose because in order to see the outcome, we see the familiar in instances. Okay. Like Suppose there is a honeybee, okay, honeycomb over there, and you throw a stone in the honeycomb, and you stand below it, what is going to happen? The honeybees are going to sting you. Okay, and there is a, uh, what you say, a, sh a, a cow dung, fresh shit on the ground, and there are flies on it. And you throw a stone in the shit, all the flies are flying away. Are they going to sting you? Not at all. But those honeycomb, honeybees are going to sting you. How did you know? You knew it from the instances. Okay. Familiar instances. Then you, after knowing the purpose, then you have to see the familiar instances. Then what is the outcome of the familiar instances of the people, the majority, the everybody in the nature. Okay. Like, like if you are running on the water, you, you will drown. You, are, you cannot run on the water. How did you know that you, you can't, you won't be able to run on the water? By Drishtant. Okay. The next point is Siddhant. Siddhant is following the established tenets. Okay. The established rules. There are many different kinds of Siddhants. Okay. And from Siddhants, we acquire Siddhis. All those people who know the Siddhants and who understand the Siddhants, they acquire Siddhi. Siddhi are the highest mark or highest position of a knowledge bearer. That is called Siddhi. Okay.
Okay. So established standards are just what kind of what do you say some rules and regulation which are already established. Those are called the established tenants. After the established tenants uh, is going to come Turk, uh, sorry, Avaya. Avaya is the related members. Okay. What different kind of people are attached with that decision? What different kind of people are attached to that karma? Everything is related to Avaya. Okay. Avaya is the things that are attached to it because when people and things are attached to it even if it's you only you who is performing the karma or performing the action or deciding the dharma there are a lot of different people or a lot of different souls which are connected to you and who are going to be a part of this cycle so our yoga is calculating all the relative members okay suppose you want to shift your home you are making a new home okay you move from one home to another now all your family members are going to move from your one home to another home so from your slightest decision making power okay if you select a home on the eighth floor so all the people in your house are going to be shifted on the eighth floor okay so Avaya is the all the related members. Okay, supposingly you you uh, the first example. Let's take a simple example of going and buying an ice cream. So it does need an opposite person who is giving you ice cream. Okay, so that person again becomes the Avaya. That is the member in the process of your karma. Okay, even when you are uh, even a, even a simple pan wala from where you are taking a pan. Okay, that is a Avaya of your karma. Because he met you in this birth, he is giving you a path, you are giving him 10 rupees. So that person is also related, related with you in a karmic bond. And that karmic bond is an avayava bond. Okay. After avayava, there comes tanka. Okay. So after finding what all members were associated with your karma, then you have to do confutation. That is, you have to do tark. It is necessary to criticize. Until and unless you criticize, you cannot find if you have made any mistake. Okay. So it is necessary to criticize. Over here, the confutation is giving tark. Okay. Giving tark of each and everything you are doing. Right. After tark comes Nirnaya. Okay. Decision. Okay. See, this is where the dharma lies. Okay. Now we came into decision making. Over here is decision. So all this process is before decision. If you guys don't do all this pro process before taking a decision, you are going to come back on this earth and Chitra Gupta is again going to send you back because dude you are not following this before taking decisions. Doing actions is right over here next. Over here there is decision. We are still not come on to doing karma and action. Karma, karma, karma ni vatu para jaji nathi hai yon. Nirnay leta ta sikho. Atlu sikso na kere ta man nirnay lehi sakso. After you take nirnay and decision then comes karma. People talk about karma this, karma this, karma yogi, karma yogi. I mean don't just first be dharma. Dharmatma. If you do all these things, then you are a dharmatma. If you are not a dharmatma, your karmas are never going to be right, no matter what you do in your life. So, first you follow these things, praman, pramaya, samasya, prayojan, drishtan, siddhant, avayav, tar, and then you take a nirnaya, that is decision. If you take a decision without any of the points above, your decision is wrong. I can find a mistake in any of your decision if you have not followed any of this. Okay, I guarantee you. So, after this thing comes VAR. That is, after taking decision also, you have to test your decision. Okay, so testing your decision takes place from discussion. 
and that is called work. Okay. And when you are discussing with yourself, okay, at that time you also have to do arguments. Okay, if you don't argue, that is chal. The next stage is chal. You have to argue your own. Uh, what you say? You have to argue your own siddhant. Okay, you have to argue your own self. Okay, you have to be a leftist for your own mind. That is how you can find your mistakes. If there is any mistake, okay. And if you find any arguments, then you have to do vitan. Vitan is objection. You have to do objection to yourself in order to be sure that your decision is right. Okay. So these three things you do to be sure of the decision. Okay. Sure of the decision you have made. That is discussion, argument, and objection. Bath, jals, and vitanya. Okay. After you finish this thing, then comes hitvabhas. Hitvabhas is called fallacy. Fallacy is removing all the false things in your arguments. Okay. There are many kinds of hitvabhas. Okay. And it is very difficult to remove all the fallacies. If I if I started count, making you count the fallacies, it will, it will like. I can take 15 ways of explaining each one of the fallacies. Okay, let's see the fallacies. One is balancing the non difference, then balancing the mutual absence of things, then balancing the heterogeneity of things, then balancing the infinite regression that things you do this, then that will happen, then again this will happen, so infinite cycle will start. Then balancing the addition of karma. If you do this and you add someone else's karma on it. Then balancing the internality. Then balancing the counter example. Then balancing the subtraction. Or you do something, so the karma, you remove the karma of someone else. You are also obliged that now that karma you have to suffer. Okay. Then balancing the non-internality. Then balancing the non-produce. Then balancing the questionable. Then balancing the non-perception. Then balancing the perception, then balancing the doubt, then balancing the unquestionable, then balancing the controversy, then balancing the demonstration, then balancing the effect, then balancing the alternative, then balancing the non reason, then balancing the reciprocity, then balancing the co presence, then balancing the presumption, then balancing the homogeneity. Okay, after you balance all these things, that is Hethobas. You remove all kinds of misconcepted beliefs, okay, all kinds of misconceptions and beliefs. You have to remove all these things because your mind is filled with beliefs. You know, I'm literally saying you, and this is the worst part of being a uh, being in the society. You are born and when you be mature, okay, whenever you get mature, your mind is filled with just belief and no truth. Just belief and no truth. You have to erase everything you believe. Everything that is when you will go to the truth because as soon as you reach 18 years, 21 years, whatever you know, everything is a belief, nothing is the truth. Nothing, okay. So, when you balance all these things, then you go into conquer Hitabha, that is all the misconcepted beliefs. After you have removed all the Hitabha, okay, after you have removed all the Hitabha, then you have to do Chal, that is. Quiver, that is there any way that someone else is getting a bad result out of your karma? Okay, whether it is your own mind, mind, whether it is your own soul who is making you do things what you don't want to do. Okay, after you have removed all the beliefs, okay, consider there is you removed all the beliefs. After that, it is still possible that it is your soul who is misguiding you. It is your mind which is misguiding you. It is your senses which is misguiding you. So for that, you have to check whether it is the chal. Okay. Is that a quiver inside your mind, inside your heart? Okay. After that comes futility or the jati, that is discarding pointlessness. Okay. So after you have discarded every wrong thing, now you have to still discard one thing. Okay. Whether what you are doing has a point to do or not. Okay. If there is no point in doing things what you are going to do. It is a pointless thing. 
So at the end, you still have to discard one more thing. That is pointlessness. If you do a pointless karma, you add one point. <laughs> if you do a pointless karma, you are still adding one point in your karmic list. Getting my point? So you have to discard pointlessness. Suppose there is no point in giving chocolate to someone. And the person is coming and you are just giving them chocolate. Now that person is obliged to give sweets back to you. So if not for you, you have to uh, you have to born again in this world so that that person can give you a chocolate. <laughs> because you did a bloody pointless karma. So you have to be born over here for a pointless thing. Okay. So at last you have to remove the discard pointlessness in your actions. And after you discard is pointlessness, the last thing is nigrasthan, which is the occasion of Rebuck or rebook, which means that whether or not you have to stop doing that action or whether you have to stop thinking about that action. Okay. After all this process, if you found that what you are what you are thinking is not right, and what are the things that you shouldn't be doing in that decision or in that karma, that is nigrasthan, which is the occasion of rebook. So. After these 16 things, okay, after these 16 things, only then you are capable to do a understand a karma, do a karma, do any kind of action, okay. Until and unless you can be a dharmatma, how can you be a karma yogi? Your atma is not having the dharma inside it. How can your body be karma? Tamari atma ma dharma nathi, to tamari atma karma kem kase? No hoy. Atma ma dharm pela rakha ni jaroor hai karm pachi gamme wa karo agar tamari atma ma dharm te to tamara karm kai gana se nahi bada hai atma hai ni bada hai yes karna se itlo bodi vichar wani jaroor no hai karma upar karma a karo karma olva karo karma ni atla jatna karma hoi atla avi dite karma hi des karwana avo karma karwana avo karma nahi karwana ala bhai decision making harku karo ne action automatic harki thai jas action upar vichar hoj nahi bada agar decision upar vichar hai to so you have to think more on the decision after you have think more on the decision, there is no point in thinking on the action. You have done what you have to do because what you decided is right. So whatever you whatever you have done is also right. Simple. Okay. So that was Nikrasa. So after that, after you have decided what to do, after everything you have solved the things. Okay. After you have solved the decision, after you have uh, understand your dharma, after you have inculcated the dharmaatma inside you, your your atma becomes filled with dharma, that is, that, that is how you become a dharmatma. And in my philosophy, dharmatma, being a dharmatma is more important than being a karma yogi. Okay. So after that, you release three things, uh, sorry, four things in your life. First, misapprehension. Okay. You release all kinds of misapprehension because you have gone through this system. After that, you release all the faults. Nobody can blame you for anything. You are faultless because you have gone through this system. Neither nature or neither the Chitra group, the judge of the afterlife can find any fault because you have gone through this list. After that, it is you have, you have been released from the activity. You don't have to do any activity because you have completed all the things you have to do in this life. So over here, you are free from activities. The next life, karmic debt, your sanchit, your sanchit karma will be ended. Okay. There is very controversial things about how to end your sanchit karma. Nobody knows it. Here it is the way. This is how you remove all the sanchit karma. Okay. After doing all these things, remove misapprehension and fault, then you re remove all the activities. That means you have removed all the karmic debts you had in your life, all the karmic faults you have had in your life because you inculcated dharma in your soul. The dharma in your soul is automatically guiding to erase all the karma of your body, of your soul. Okay. After activity, then you have to go, then after you have erased, you are released from the, all the activities of your life, then you will be released from the birth cycle. Until you have released the activity, you are going to birth, birth, take birth again and again and again. But only after you, are, you have released from the activity, then you will be released from birth. Okay. Now someone will ask me, why is pain there at the last? If, if, the, birth, if the person is not born, Will the, how come pain would be there? Because pain would be there because of, if the person is not born, 
but if the person has died upon upon mrityu which is the person becomes a ghost then the person would also suffer pain either being taking birth over here okay so in that case he also at the last you have to remove the pain of your soul so that you don't stay over here on this earth as a soul as atma okay so these are the 16 things and i guess i have taken a lot of time in the next session we are strictly going to talk on one topic that is praman and i guess it will take very long to understand praman all the means of right is knowledge okay and after that we'll take one of one, uh, all these topics one by one by one and i'm going to teach you all the complete nyay sutra of gautam rishi or the book of justice of chitragupt okay so thank you very much for joining the basics today and i hope everyone would join me in the journey of understanding your soul understanding the reality of nature and thank you very much